Hi everybody. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys my everyday makeup routine. I really wanted to do a sit down video because I feel like I haven't been able to like sit down and talk to you guys in a while and kind of just update you like on my life. And also people have been asking for my makeup routine. So I'm gonna show you. I started with this Cetaphil sunscreen. I always follow it up with the Glossier After Balm, but I just don't use like a ton. I'll just like put some little dots on my face and then rub that in. I feel like this helps my makeup look a little bit more even and less patchy and just makes things a little bit easier to blend. And after I do that, I always set it with powder. I use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. I asked you guys on my Instagram story to ask me questions or give me just things to talk about while I do my makeup. Also, this brush is the e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush. A lot of people are saying to talk about mental health. Someone asked, how am I really? And I feel like I'm actually doing really good. Next, I'm using this e.l.f. Matte Setting Spray. I'm going to wait for this to dry. But yeah, I've actually been doing really good. I think honestly it's because I know that my time at my dorm is gonna come to an end soon. Living in a dorm honestly doesn't bother me that much anymore. I don't know how to explain this. It was never living in a dorm that actually bothered me. It was like moving away from everything I've ever known, moving away from my family, my friends, the only house I've ever lived in, to Los Angeles, which is like a very overwhelming place to move to. By the way, my makeup routine does change a lot. I always just alternate depending on what I'm doing that day or just how I'm feeling. I don't know. So for like foundation slash like skin tint. Oh my god. I always switch between these three. So I have the Morphe Hint Hint Skin Tint in the shade Hint of Beige, the Glossier Skin Tint in the shade G6, and then the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation in the shade 125. If I don't need that much coverage and I'm going for a very natural look, I will use the Glossier Skin Tint. Something in between is probably the Morphe one. And then if I want the most coverage, I'll use this. I'm just gonna choose my favorite to use today, which is the Maybelline one. I feel like this just makes my skin look the best. So I put a little bit on the back of my hand and I just put dots of it all over my face. So yeah, I can't remember exactly what I was saying, but basically I really feel like I have pretty much fully adjusted to living here and just moving and everything. I just feel a million times better than I did when I first moved here. That was genuinely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I have never struggled so much mentally before. I feel like a lot of people from what I've seen don't really talk about how hard it is to move to college. I feel like I would always see on TikTok that it's literally just like the time of your life and all you do is party and hang out with your friends and you have so much freedom and all that. And that is just not what it was like for me. I was struggling. I was not happy when I first moved here. The entire first semester for me was really bad. But let me just say also, it does depend on what kind of person you are. I'm an introvert. I very much am like a family stay at home type of person. I know that for some people, the reality actually is like, like, oh, you literally just go have fun, have the time of your life, and it's great, and there's no issues, you know? For some people, it really is like that, so don't stress. I'm not saying that everybody's gonna have like a miserable time when they first move to college. Not what I'm saying at all. By the way, for concealer, I'm using the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer, and this is the matte one, and I just put two little dots under my eyes like this. Sometimes I'll throw some over here, maybe on my forehead to just brighten it up a little bit, or on my upper lip, kind of just anywhere in my T-zone, but today I'm gonna stick with just this. But yeah, I feel like I definitely felt very alone when I first came here and realized how hard it was because it seemed like it just wasn't hard for anyone else and everything that I was seeing about college was just like happy and fun and all that. So I felt like I really was the only one struggling when obviously that was not the case. But yeah, just know that if you have a hard time when you go to college, you are not alone. It is a very big transition. Like your life is changing, you know? And for some people, they're super excited for that. For other people like myself, I was not so excited and I was definitely more more scared to move to college, but now I feel like I am a completely different person and I feel a lot more like an adult. I feel more capable. I feel more mature. I have just grown so, so much. For bronzer, I actually do alternate between a couple. This one is probably my more go-to. So I like to use the Glossier Solar Paint in the shade Ray and the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand in the shade Fair Medium. Both of these are great. This one, the actual product is better. This one, the packaging and the applicator is better. So normally, 
I just tend to go with this one just because if I'm not doing anything like crazy, I don't really need to like use like the better product. It's kind of just like, okay, this is quicker and easier to use. So I'm just gonna use it. I'll show you what the applicator looks like. I wish the Charlotte Tilbury one was like this because this is so easy to apply. You just draw it on wherever you want it and blend it out. But this one it has this whole little sponge thing and this part gets so dirty and that's where you have to like grab it to twist it. If you have it, you know what I mean, but it's just a very like annoying product to use. So a lot of times I just stick to solar paint. So you guys are gonna be getting the most realistic routine that I usually do. So let's just use solar paint. I kind of just brush it on my cheekbones like this. I like putting it pretty high because if you put it like right here where I feel like you would normally think to put like contour, it just drags your face down. I don't know. I feel like this kind of gives you like a little facelift. So I like to do that. And then I put a couple lines of it on my forehead like that. And then sometimes if I'm feeling kind of crazy, I'll put it on my nose too. Okay, let's blend. While we're on the topic of college, a lot of people ask me if I recommend the college that I go to. I just don't know what to say because it feels like bad and wrong to say no, but that's like my honest opinion. This is a commuter school. And so I don't know, there's just not like a ton of social life. It doesn't feel like a huge like community or something. I have no complaints about like the academic side. It's not that I wouldn't recommend this college. I don't know. This is also very, very, very biased because I had such a bad experience last semester and it might not even be this college's fault. Okay, I just blended her out. I really like how it's turning out. I think I'm having a good makeup day today. For blush, I alternate between the Morphe 2 Wonder Tint in the shade For You page and then this Rare Beauty blush. Look how cute the packaging is in the shade Nearly Mauve. I like both of these pretty equally. I think they're both very easy to blend. It's just a matter of like what shade I want. If I want something a little bit more pink, I'll go with the Morphe one. And if I want something a little bit more mauve, I'll go with the Rare Beauty one. Not sure what I'm feeling today. I'm thinking let's go with the pink. By the way, to blend my bronzer, I used the e.l.f. Complexion Duo brush. I feel like this blends the easiest with a brush and so does the solar paint actually. It's very pigmented. So all I do is tap it once and then just start blending it out at the top of my cheekbones. I think that looks so pretty. I'm going in with a little bit more because I love blush. Any updates on your new apartment? Yes and no. So I will have an apartment tour vlog coming up, but when I upload that video, I want to have already found the apartment and know which one I am picking. So I just have to wait until I actually have an apartment to upload that video because that's when the apartment hunting ends, if that makes sense. But my future roommate, Rachel, and I went to look at one yesterday that we both are absolutely in love with. I can't even describe the love that we have for this place. We are obsessed with it. It's perfect. And we applied last night. So we're waiting to hear back and we are so nervous. So maybe we found one. Let's hope I did. We are crossing our fingers. I'm using the same translucent powder that I used earlier in this video and I'm using it to set my under eyes and I am using a dry beauty blender to do that. This is a different one than I was using before. I've really been liking applying powder like this recently. I feel like it gives you a very like airbrush look but if I don't have time or if I'm not feeling like using my beauty blender then I will just apply it with a brush and it's like kind of the same but I feel like this does look a little bit better and then I'll usually go in with a brush and just kind of like I don't know go over my face I don't know if this does anything it kind of just I guess brushes off excess powder and just smooths everything out okay base makeup is pretty much done I'm gonna do my eyebrows now actually before that if I don't use this translucent powder which this is what I use like 90% of the time but sometimes I'll use the airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Micro Powder by Charlotte Tilbury. This stuff is so good. Now I'm gonna go in with the Glossier Boy Brow. I just used the clear one. I kind of just brush the actual product through my eyebrows and I don't really like shape them. And then I go in with another brush, like this little spoolie. I don't even know what this is from. I think this is like my mom's. She just gave me this for the actual like brush part. And then I go through and like shape them how I want because the brush on the boy brow is just a little small. Like I can do it and it's not like hard or anything but I prefer to use this bigger brush so I kind of just brush my eyebrows up and then go over the sides like that and kind of like fix it and then sometimes I'll take the little front pieces and kind of like angle them up a little bit more now it's time for eyeliner I use just a brown eyeshadow the one I'm using is in the James Charles palette I don't know the shade name but it's the one on the top right honestly any brown shadow will do and then I take this little angled brush from morphe and I kind of like go like this to kind of like 
flatten it and make it like really sharp. <laughs> I think this is actually like an eyebrow brush. I'm not sure. And then I just kind of follow my waterline. Like I'll just keep the line going. That's how I know where to draw the line, if that makes sense. Kind of hard to explain, but see how it's like curving like this and then it goes like straight up. So that is where I would like draw the eyeliner. I am gonna zoom you guys in. So I just do one straight line up and this all depends on like your eye shape and everything, but this is what works for me. So I will go from the end of the line and I keep my eyes open for this because it turns out the best, but go from the end and then just draw a straight line until it meets your eyelid. And then I'll just keep getting more shadow on the brush and just fill it in as much as I need. I love doing brown eyeliner because I feel like it just looks a little more natural and like less harsh. It's very like soft and especially doing it with eyeshadow. I feel like I just love the look that it gives. My left eye always turns out better than my right. So I'm gonna do my right really quick and then come back. Okay, the right eye is honestly not looking too bad today. So next I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. Another life update that I have for you guys is that I got a manager, which is something that I've been wanting for so long. It was honestly very intimidating and kind of like discouraging not having anybody to really like help me, like an actual professional. Also, I'm using the Glossier Lash Slick Mascara. Favorite mascara ever. It gives you such a nice like natural look. It's very lengthening and I just love it. But I just always would see these people who are getting these cool deals and like just doing a lot better than me. And it's hard to not compare yourself, especially when your job is based on numbers and how many people like you and stuff like that. So I don't know. It was just honestly a big reason why I just wasn't putting out content that I like loved for a while because I just wasn't that inspired. I wasn't super like motivated to be doing well on YouTube because I was just like, well, my channel is a flop. Everyone hates it. Like, I don't know. I just was in that mindset for way too long. And then I started to come out of it as I was feeling better mentally and I was much more motivated to post consistently. And having a manager has been very good for my confidence too, which is weird, but it does make sense. She just helps me out a lot. She's given me some good tips and she helps me work with companies that I want to work with, which is awesome. So I don't know. It just feels a lot more like a career now. Like I feel like an adult, if that makes sense. It has helped me like re-spark that passion and love for YouTube. And that just could not make me happier because I love making YouTube videos so much. And for a long time, I just didn't. I like almost like resented YouTube. And now I'm back to feeling great about it and just being so excited for what's to come and loving making videos and connecting with you guys and it's just so much fun. It's my creative outlet and it's just a great feeling to have that back. Right after I do my mascara, I always take a Q-tip and clean up wherever I got mascara on my eyelid. I actually did a pretty good job of not getting any on my eyelids today. And then I take the other end of the Q-tip and I like lick my lips and then go over them with the Q-tip and just get all the excess makeup off. Okay, makeup is off my lips and now it's time for highlight. I use this one in the James Charles palette. I have been really wanting to look for a new highlighter though and I really want to try a liquid highlighter. I've heard good things about the Rare Beauty one and I should actually get it because the Sephora sale is going on right now. So if you like that one, comment and let me know. Or if you have any recommendations for a liquid highlighter, let me know. Also, this is the brush that I was using. It's by Morphe. I just did it in my inner corners. I put like a tiny bit, my brow bones, and then a little dot on my nose right here and then a tiny little line right here. And then I take this Real Techniques setting brush. The number is 402 and then I use the same highlighter and put it on my cheekbones. I feel like it's been going on really weird on my cheekbones recently and I don't know why because this was my favorite highlighter for so long. Okay, now it is time for setting spray. So I am about to drench my face in this. It should look like you just got out of the shower. Oh my God. And then I just fan myself until it dries. I put so much on, but it really works. I feel like it really does stay. And this setting spray is only $5. I used to think that setting spray was kind of just like a scam. Like it just didn't do anything, but maybe I just wasn't using the right one because this setting spray is so good. I used the Morphe setting spray for a really long time. Maybe I also just didn't use enough of it. I'm not really sure. And then for lips, I also alternate between a few things. So sometimes what I do is I use Benetint. I have this tiny little bottle, um, probably from some set 
set that I got years ago and I found this one day and I was like, wait, I wanna try something. So I take the brush and I overline my lips with this and then I fill them in and put Aquaphor on. The easiest way to look like you have lip injections. Maybe I will do it today just to show you guys. Okay, so right here in this section, I overline. I don't overline on the sides of my mouth and then same on the bottom, I overline underneath just in the middle and then connect it to the sides. And then I just fill my lips in with whatever's left and then you just go like this. Okay, so here it is right after without anything else on. It's just the Benetton. And I feel like if you don't look super close, your lips just look bigger. And you can't really tell why. I feel like it just makes them look more plump. And it looks more natural because it's like a lip stain. And so it's not like lip liner where you can like tell that you have it on. I don't know how to explain it. I just added like the tiniest bit more. So anyways, next I use Aquaphor. And there you go. This has been my recent lip combo. And I've really been liking it. If I don't do this, I use the NYX lip liner in the shade natural with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lipstick. And then I'll go over it with the Dior lip oil. So that is my finished makeup routine. I really like it. Also, I have a fun video coming on Wednesday that has taken like a week to film. I'm just so excited about it. I would upload it on Sunday like usual, but it's not in my control. I have to upload it on Wednesday. So there might not be a video the following Sunday, but you still will get a video this week or next week, I mean, but it's just gonna be like weird dates. I don't know. So I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this makeup tutorial. Also, make sure to subscribe so you guys can see all the fun videos that I have coming up for the summer, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.